This video is sponsored by NordVPN. More from them later. The last. You're like, I have this way of making it taste extra juicy. Oh, I'm gonna inject fault? it. Well, it's not my fault. You made the I, marinade not, yeah, with like chilies in it and stuff. Yeah, I feel like we're just kind of smearing things around, right? Take it easy on no. that. No, okay. I'm just gonna say it. I think Netflix makes bad shows and I think they make them on purpose. Boo. I know. Hey, I know, you cut I know. your hair. Hey, I know. Earlier this month, they wrapped up season four of that one show that they spend the entire GDP of a small country on, so I figured it was time for me to see what else they have to offer. And when I say that, I mean stuff that Netflix produces, not the good stuff that they have licensing for. I mean, Netflix originals. And while they pump out 900 shows a month, it feels like, I do want to focus on just one, and that is American Dream Makeover. I have messed up and mixed up the words to that title so many times because the words are the most generic words ever. Well, I messed it up in the video too. It's a, uh, it's not American Dream Home Makeover. I don't even know what it is now I'm saying this. I just know that American is not in the title, so. Yeah. This show could be about a thousand different things, but it's actually a home remodeling show, pretty much something that you would see on HGTV, but there is a very clear reason why it is not on HGTV and is instead on Netflix. I'll get to that in a second, though. The show follows married couple Shay and Sid as they help make families' dreams come true by updating their homes to fit their own unique style. Or at least that's what they're going for. On the surface, this feels like your average home makeover show hosted by a cute couple, but let me tell you, it's hilarious. I mentioned that there was a pretty clear reason why it's not on a network like HGTV, and I'm pretty sure that's because they don't meet the requirements for time spent working on a house. Don't get me wrong, they do work on houses, but they also do a lot of other stuff. Each episode is a different project they're helping someone out with, and out of that 30 minute episode, about five-ish minutes is spent working on said project, and then the rest is us following Shay and Sid on the most unnecessarily high production family vlog you've ever seen. Wow. <laughs> oh my. That got oh me real my good, gosh. Huh? I was gonna make a joke about how I'd rather watch an Ace Family vlog than this, but then I said it out loud and now I don't feel so good. Now Shay and Sid have been in the interior design and furnishing business for some time now. They started doing interior decorating and then sold all their stuff, moved to Utah, and now run two companies there. If you told an AI program to create an image of two Mormons living in Utah that run an interior decorating business, it would create Shay and Sid. Now Sid, the husband, is actually the CEO of both of their businesses that they run, but that's all he does doesn't really do anything else. There's a running joke that no one knows what Sid does. What does he do? Does he help with some of the accounting sometimes? That is not a joke. I don't think anyone knows what Sid does. Not the employees, not us at home, not even Sid. I thought this was gonna be more like the Property Brothers show. You know, the one with the twins where one of them is strangely dating Zoe Deschanel and the other one looks like he was in the womb for an extra day? Because on that show, they both have their own sets of expertise, like one is a real estate expert and the other is a licensed contractor, so they both have the things they bring to the table. But no, Sid just hangs out. Literally, I mean, just look at this. He's always just like chilling, sitting back, relaxing, not giving a shit. You know where we're going, right? I know the general direction, like north. <laughs> Meeting Emily and Zan called. Most of the time, he's really just giving Shay a ride there, giving the kids a ride there, then taking the kids back, and I think Shay just doesn't have a driver's license. I'm assuming the show was originally going to be just Shay, but then the producers realized she and Sid's chemistry, or lack thereof, and realized that was way more entertaining. They had to have just told Shay and Sid beforehand, like, hey, if you guys have got any problems, annoyances, grievances, no matter how small or petty, <laughs> just uh, bring them up. Bring them up. If there's a dull moment, bring them up, because we can only film so much of you making your kids breakfast. A lot of those awkward moments between the two are moments where, if not for the camera crew, they would have just started fighting. It's usually Sid doing or saying something that annoys the living hell out of Shay, and then before she gets a chance to say something probably pretty mean, she stops herself and takes a breath, maybe laughs for a second, and I love it. Well guys, it's me with a different shirt on, and you know what that means. <laughs> I threw up. But also, it's time to pay some bills and thank the sponsor of today's video, NordVPN. When it comes to using the web, whether you're at home or out and about, it's important to protect yourself and your personal information. With NordVPN, you can anonymize your internet usage and keep your private information locked down. And Nord is easy to use. Like, 
actually really easy to use. I was surprised. I haven't used a VPN in so long, but my experience with Nord has been very pleasant. And fast too. With over 5,600 servers in 59 countries, you have more access than ever to fast and secure servers near you. Or not near you. Because whether you're away and want to watch something from back home, or just want to stream content in other countries, just switch your server on over and boom, look at that. I'm watching The Office on Netflix, bruv. I'm so sorry. And aside from all those great features, you also get the added security of NordVPN's advanced anti-malware protection. Nord's threat protection blocks intrusive ads and web trackers to give you not only a safe, but overall better web experience. And you can do this on all of your devices because Nord is available on all major tech platforms. So go ahead and do yourself a favor and head on over to nordvpn.com slash chrisjames to get a huge discount on a two-year plan plus one month free. Thank you to NordVPN for sponsoring and now back to the video. I'm a fluffer. <laughs> You're well, a fluffer. Hold on, wait. How could I have forgotten Sid's other job? The fluffer. Once you fluff long enough, you know when that thing's perfect. It's not amateur hour over here. I'm gonna go out on a limb here and say that nobody in that room knows what a fluffer actually is. Because there's no way that youth pastor Sid would even know what a fluffer actually is. And if he did, he would not make a joke about it. I've given up on trying to get Sid to take things seriously. I just like don't want to take things too seriously, I feel like that'll be like the day when I'm like, oh, it's not fun anymore. Home renovation stuff on this show aside, it really is odd how much they're trying to push this family onto us and show us their life. It has the vibe of a reality show that you'd see on E! where you follow a retired NFL star and his family, except it's just some fucking Mormon family we know nothing about in Utah. So why would we care about all this? But when they are working on homes, the very little amount of time that they are working on homes, how they go about it has drawn some criticism. What seems to be the case is Shay, while she makes decent looking spaces, only has really one style. That is Target. Pretty much every room she designs looks like it would be in a Target catalog, which is fitting because they have a line of stuff that they sell at Target, so I guess it makes sense, but she doesn't really branch out style-wise, which I could give less of a shit about, but it comes at sort of a detriment to the wants and desires of her clients and what they want her to do to their space, because all she's going to end up doing is making Target. I don't think that these pillows are going to give her the Studio McGee look. You'll see more of what I mean in a minute, but there's one project I do want to focus on for a sec, and that is the home theater episode. They help out Bachelor Ennis to transform his basement room into the home theater of his dreams. What's hilarious is his house is not... It's not what you would consider a home theater home. The house itself is fine. I'm not knocking it. But I think we can all agree that putting a home theater in this house would be quite excessive. An unnecessary add-on purchase, like when you're asked if you want to buy a four-year protection plan on a 72-pack of Amazon Basics AA batteries, when you know your Roku remote is going to eat all of them up in three weeks. Now what really blows my mind is the budget he has for this project. What are you thinking the budget is? for the room. I'm thinking a cool 30,000, I would okay. say. 30,000 fucking dollars. You've got to imagine how weird this would be for the people that normally come over to watch movies seeing this for the first time. Dude, this is... How much did you spend on this? Oh, not that much, like 30,000, give or take. 30, give or take? Aren't you renting? Yeah, why? Oh, this is legitimate. <laughs> okay, okay. Now, while the show I'm focusing on is American Dream Ninja Warrior Dream Makeover, I don't, whatever, fucking, it doesn't matter. I do want to point out that this is just one of many Netflix original shows that all share similar traits. They feel the same. One of those traits being the music that they use for transitions. Name a more iconic duo than Drone Shots and the worst fucking music you've ever heard on a Netflix show. I swear 99% of the music budget for these shows is spent on a song from an artist you've probably heard of, but a song of theirs that you have definitely not. And then the rest of their music budget, that last 1%, is spent on... 300 royalty-free tracks where seven of them probably still have the audio jungle watermark on them. One example of this that I cannot get out of my head is from another Netflix show called How to Build a Sex Room, which is quite similar to the premise of the show we're talking about today. Hosted by the horniest old woman I have ever seen, Melanie, who helps couples build their own custom sex rooms. <gasps> It's got an imprint at the bottom on one side, which actually when you sit on it is quite stimulating. Ooh! In one of the episodes on the show, there's a couple that is, well, getting a sex room built, but the boyfriend wants to propose to the girlfriend, and there's a song they play around this process that 
It pretty much sums up what I'm talking about. Oh my god. I just really want you to say yes. I just really want you to say yes. They always do this in every Netflix original reality show. They play music that's borderline. Please say yes, please say yes. Yes, the, the question in question is proposing to you. That is what I'm doing. I hope you say yes to marriage with me. Also, I have to say before I let the show go, something I found hilarious was the episodes where the couple that they're helping build a sex room has kids. Because I do applaud the people that go on this show about being so public about this and having a level of not giving a shit that I will never achieve. Like, I didn't become fully confident making YouTube videos until I had a regular viewer base of enough people to create a fire hazard inside of an Arby's, but at a certain point the shame starts to shift from you to others, like your 9 and 12 year old kids for example. A little more privacy. Okay. From children, I don't have a lock oh. on my door. Oh, there's a no-no for you. <laughs> <laughs> the last thing that I want as a 12 year old is to find out my parents were on a Netflix reality show where they just built a sex room. Sorry. A sex shed. I'm just wondering if you would be agreeable if I bought in perhaps a shed that we would convert into a sex shed. Just imagine how awkward the conversations with other kids at school would be for them. Hey, Ethan, I uh, saw your parents on a Netflix show the other night. <laughs> What's up with that? Oh yeah, they built my dad a shed in the backyard for all of his gym equipment so he can work out at home. It's pretty cool, right? Oh, that's what they told you. Well, uh... Well, okay then. Like, I already know what would happen when the neighbor kids come over to play in the backyard. I know what neighbor kids are like, right? There's always that one little shit that lives down the street that's always got dirt on him that's gonna find his way to that shed, and he's gonna get in that shed, and it's gonna be all over from there. Okay, okay, I went off track a little bit, so back to... Fucking dream Mormon makeover, whatever the fuck it is. I mentioned how useless Sid is in the whole operation, but that doesn't matter because... Tyler. Tyler is this giant that does all of their major contracting, and unlike Sid, is actually useful. And Shay actually likes him. Tyler is a jack of all trades, and he's really good at what he does. He asks questions, gets the details right to make my vision happen. So I want to take a look at one of Shay's remodels where, as I mentioned, she just kind of does her own thing even if it's not what the clients wanted. So I like how it feels tropical, but it's not over the top. Okay, it's over the top. So Jessica, the client, wants her room to be kind of a tropical Hawaiian theme, inspired by a pillow that she brought back from Hawaii that has a sentimental value to her. But because the pillow she has is not like anything they sell at Target, Shay is stumped. So once Jessica tells Shay the words inspiration, it basically gives her the green light to do whatever she wants and take as many liberties as she can. I think this is good inspiration. Okay, yes, that helps me. Inspiration, I can work with that. Also, I'm pretty sure Shay is just gonna burn those fucking pillows because she takes them away and they are never seen again. <laughs> I'm gonna take this with me. Okay, we will get started. But in the confessional after this, Sid just gets to rapid fire as many jokes as he can before Shay's head combusts of annoyance. I would have just gone like sand on the floor, <laughs> mirror on the wall, and like lots of alcohol, you know? <laughs> Pina coladas, you know? Yeah. Margarita machine for sure. <laughs> but that's not even Hawaiian, that's like- so You're just gonna get going? <laughs> But that's not even Hawaiian, that's like- Hey, you fucking done? Jesus Christ. And maybe t t tiki torches too? My fucking God. And then we'll have one, two, this light's going, but we're gonna have the new light. Right. So after about 10 minutes of working on the house, the show realizes it is way past due for focusing on the McGee's, so we get to see what is up with them. And it's Sid's birthday, which means Shay has to say some nice shit to him. I'm really grateful that I fell in love with this surfer skater boy. Oh, Tell him. Hey. Whoopie pie. Thanks, buddy. <laughs> oh my gosh. A basket of whoopie pies, like my love language right there. Oh, and also whoopie pies, which, you know, it's perfect. It makes perfect sense that his thing is whoopie pies. But even the kids are like, oh, so, uh, no cake, huh? Hmm. Okay. You want? I have whoopie pie and cake. This is the cake. That's uh, pretty good, huh? Because I have never seen a kid given a treat, take a bite of that treat, and then hand it back. <laughs> Sid is fun. Thanks, baby. <laughs> Sid is fun. Thanks, babe. Just like we practiced. Sid is not just the good looks. He is the crazy glue 
holding the company and our family together. I'm gonna get that written down on a t-shirt, meme that, and like send it to you every You're day. You're never going to let me forget that I said never. that. Never. Okay, one, meme that. Number two, he is way too happy that she said a normal, nice thing to him. Like, that is not the usual. <laughs> I'm going to write that down, and I'm going to put it on a shirt, and I'm going to mail it to you, and then you are not going to do any of that, because tomorrow, once the sun comes up, it's going to be back to business as usual. Do you understand? I understand. I understand. I understand. Ma'am, Shay. Uh, Mrs. Tyler McGee. Mrs. Tyler McGee. We've decided to add a wall paneling that we can paint a natural white and so it feels very coastal and then it has some dimension. So Shay keeps saying coastal, which I'm pretty sure the client wanted tropical, but as we know, Shay can't compute that because tropical is not white. So coastal it is. We have a couple of wovens, you know, wovens I think give a very coastal texture. But now that we got some stupid home renovation out of the way, it's time to check back in with the McGee's and see what's stirring up the pot. And if you guessed a pork butt, then you probably watched the fucking show. I don't know. Do you remember last time I cooked on? Hard to miss because our ceiling still has spots all over it. The last? You're like, I have this way of making it taste extra juicy. Oh, I'm going to inject fault? it. Well, it's not my fault. You made the marinade yeah. with like chilies think he was... in it and stuff. The magic eraser kind of got it off, but I feel like we're gonna need to do some touch-up paint. Oh, we're for sure gonna have to do mm -hmm. touch-up paint. And by we, oh, I mean gosh. you. I was gonna talk to you the painters and see if they could do it. I bet he just abuses the hell out of those painters he just mentioned. Like they're the only people he can push around because nobody else would let Sid push them around, let's be honest. So he just, takes it all out on them. Do <laughs> you like this artwork? Does this look coastal enough? Yeah, it's like Northern California coastal. Mainly because if you just squint your eyes when you're looking at it, all you see is white, which is perfect for Shay. Yeah, I feel like we're just kind of smearing things around, right? Take it easy on no. that. No, okay. Okay, Sid, carry on, I guess. So now it's time for them to finally do the big reveal to Jessica and her husband, which they take it fine. <laughs> they, they, don't, they don't seem too shocked. Although I can only imagine Jessica on the inside is realizing that none of what she wanted happened because the whole room is just still fucking white. And even the pillows that she requested the room to be designed after aren't even there. Those pillows on the bed are different pillows. I wasn't joking when I said that Shay got rid of those pillows. She burned them in a fucking hole. So it looks like they paid $30,000 for them to just tear down some molding, put up some beams, and then buy like $200 worth of shit from Target. So, sounds like money well spent to me. But yeah guys, that's what Netflix is pumping out these days, and I'm over here just eating it up, or at the very least following for their commentary YouTuber bait. But if you enjoyed this video, consider giving it a like rating down below, commenting, sharing with your friends, it all helps me out a ton. Thank you for watching, thank you to NordVPN for sponsoring, and with all that being said, I will see you next time. Goodbye. Please say yes, please say yes. Yes, the, the question in question is proposing to you. That is what I'm doing. I hope you say yes to marriage with me.